All right, so welcome back. And in this uh, lecture, we're going to talk about creating and using an ethogram. So again, one of my favorite human beings ever to, to walk the planet, and she's still with us, and she'll be with us forever. I really love Jane Goodall. I, I just, oh, amazing woman. So, you know, I love this quote because it's so true. You cannot share your life with a dog or a cat and not know perfectly well that animals have personalities and minds and feelings. And I can't agree with that more, that the more you, you're, you're around animals, you realize they all have a range of emotions and behaviors. So ethology is the science of studying animal behavior. And I actually love elephants. So you love this picture of the, this uh, calf playing in the, in the, the, the shore of a beach and then face planting at the end is a pretty great picture. So anyways, ethology is the study of animal behavior. And then we have ethogram. So eth ethology, ethogram, you can see is really a catalog encyclopedia of many, 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 many behaviors. But the, the, the good way to think about an ethogram really is it's, it's really we're quanti quantifying behavior. So we're applying values. So then we can run statistics and we can figure out if behaviors are significant or not. So that's really what we're doing with an ethogram. We're trying to really scientifically you know, evaluate some of these behaviors. So I, in the previous lecture, I talked about you know, using this as a, uh, a tool for looking at time budgets in the Somali wild ass, Somali wild ass, grevy zebra, and horses. It's just so you know, we took about over 1,500 observations. Now, we didn't do that 1,500 every 30 seconds you know, over many, many days. This was sometimes it would be two or three of us at once observing an, a different focal animal and so every 30 seconds we would write down behaviors and we would compile that data. So that's why you're working in research groups because you know, the more you, you collaborate, the more powerful your study can be. And, and nobody can go out and really do 1,500 observations you know, unless you have a lot of time on your hands and this is all you do all day, you know, all month, all season, you know, or all semester doing that. So that's why you're cutting kind of groups. And just to show you, you know, how many observations it takes to get this data. So in this slide, just kind of summarizing why ethograms are important. And I think really, you know, it's not just used to understand how animals behave and interact in their environment. I really think the third bullet's really important too, as far as giving us data to study ethology, study these behaviors. So, so they are a critical tool that we use uh, in science. So the uh, setting up your ethograms or setting up an ethogram is really, you know, you can look that the behaviors can range from really, you know, one, which we talked about that one zero sampling last lecture. You can just look at one behavior. So if I was just interested in this gray horse, how often they, they graze or forage, you know, I could do that. I could set up my ethogram, set up one, one zero sampling and run with it. Pretty easy. But then let's say I really wanted to get more complex and I wanted to look at how often this horse slept, moved, played, or fought with other uh, specifics, or you know was alert, laying down. So if I could design a, a very extensive ethogram to try to capture all of these behaviors. Now, important to remember, this ethogram is for your study. So when you design it, you, you need to make sure that your definitions are well-defined because even though it's say you're the individual with your study, you know you want to be able to explain it to other people, or if you get helpers, or you're going to be in groups. So the group has to decide on the uh, the definition of a behavior. But you want to make sure you write that down and you have that, you know, clearly clearly defined, so you understand which behavior means what. So an example is let's just say you know behaviors can be very simple to very complex let's just say i want to look at social behaviors in horses right anything that's social anything like playing or grooming or you know vocalization between two horses i could say that's just social behavior so anytime i observe that i just write down social behavior right just check it off but you can break it down to get a little bit more complex so if i said you know in a you know, I wanted to look more at play, I can just say, okay, not only do I have social behavior, I have aggression, I have affiliative, I have submission, and I have play, and I have vocalization, this, that, and the other. Well, with the play category, 
you can see you know either self play or play with an object or play with another you know that could all fall into play so anytime I saw that I'd see play but again we can even get deeper into the behavior. So let's say I was really curious about play behavior. Then in my ethogram, let's just say I was studying play behavior. That was really my focus. Then I really want to break that out. I want to, I want play with an object, play with by themselves, play with a, a conspecific or someone else in the herd. So I'd have all these play behaviors laid out. So because I was just curious in that one behavior of play, I want to make sure I design my ethogram to capture all those. So which behaviors, that's again up to you and really trying to understand what you wanna study and what you're trying to learn more about. That's gonna help drive which behaviors you wanna build into your ethogram. So it's also important to remember if, if you're looking at a species specific ethogram and like if we were studying lions, you know, I'm not gonna put forage or browse in there because they don't really do it. Yeah, sometimes our cats eat, you know, domestic cats eat grass. I have no idea why they do it, but they do. You know, is that, are you gonna observe that in wild lions? Probably not. I'm more interested in roaring, hunting, you know, uh, group dynamics, social behaviors, stuff like that. So you can design your ethogram or you want to design your ethogram that falls into that species. And then again, like you can break it down even further. So if I was really interested in lioness behavior and mothering, nurturing behavior, you know, I could have a, something on grooming, you know, so she's grooming her cubs, grooming herself, also nursing, nursing cubs, stuff like that. So you can uh, really break it down to get a little bit more complex. So here's 10 easy steps on designing your ethogram. So again, choose your species. We're always going to start with that, right? So we've already kind of designated which species we're going to look at. Now, one of the things you want to do is review the literature and, and we'll be doing that next week with our next uh, topic, looking at uh, lit doing a literature review. But you want to go out there and see what people have, have already looked at. So if I was interested in nurturing behavior of a lioness, you know, I go in there and let's say I find tons and tons of papers on that. Well, that's been pretty well done is there some new aspect i can look at that no one's looked at is there maybe a different subspecies of lions that that maybe there's some differences i don't know you know so you want to make sure you go into the literature see what's known see what's been done and then try to really kind of do something new now you always want to choose the individuals the location and remember the when so you want to do that and then you want to go observe the animals you want to go watch them first before you design your ethogram because you want to see what they actually do. And using the Santa Fe Zoo as an example, if you wanted to do Asian small clawed otters, I will tell you, you need to know when they're active because every time I go by their exhibit, they're, they're not out there, they're sleeping somewhere. So, you know, are they more active in the morning? Are they active in the, in the evening? Are they at more active at night? You know, those are things that you kind of need to determine if you're using that species to study. Um, so you want to go out and observe them, take notes, kind of figure out what you observed. Okay, yeah, they were active at say 8 a.m. and you know, by noon they were kind of you know inactive, off, out of view, hidden in a log. But then around six o'clock sunset time, they kind of came active, they swam a lot and did this. So you want to take those notes and then realize, okay, well, if I'm gonna study their behavior, I need to be there at these times um, doing that. Then you postulate your research questions, your hypothesis. Okay, you know, I'm gonna look at this then you select the behaviors that are going to aid in you answering your research question or your hypothesis. So then you design your ethogram and then you go out and do it. Then you execute your experiment, collect your data, analyze your data and discuss it and, and, and push it out, you know, communicate it to others. So 10 easy steps on how you should go about your ethogram. Now some necessary components. You need to have a list of behaviors with definitions. Again, this is you, you and your research group, how you define that behavior, okay? So it doesn't necessarily have to be what I did or, or what a TA did or something, it's what you, okay? I define play as this, I defined, you know, affiliative as this, submissive behavior as this. So be very specific uh, in what you do. And also remember, you, we generally list the behaviors across the ethogram in level of importance. So if I'm interested in, say, locomotive movement of horses, 
well, locomotion, and, and whether I could put short, medium, and long, like the distance they traveled, and, or I could put speed or, or whatever, but all of those behaviors are at the very front of my ethogram. So let's say I have a horse that's grazing, but they're moving. Okay, on my ethogram, I do have a feed forage box way down here, but if they're moving and I care about locomotion, that's my study, I'm just gonna check off the locomotion box. You don't check off both, you just check off one and, you, and the most important, okay? And then generally in your ethogram, you wanna give a short code because you can't write out all these things across a spreadsheet and have it all fill and be able to be legible or, and readable. So generally we assign shortened codes. So like in this example, groom self is GS and then there's the definition, okay, right behind it. So that way I could go and pick up this ethogram and know groom self means animal engages in washing or smoothing its own fur or hair using tongue or for, forelimbs. So anytime I saw that behavior using this ethogram, that is what, I if I saw that behavior, I would check off GS, okay? So here's a couple things, a uh, couple examples of, of ethograms that we've done in my lab with Angie Adkin. So you can see some maintenance behaviors. This is a full ethogram, so nursing. You can see the definitions there. Go down, there's alert. These are some standard, stand, uh, lay down. So eliminatory, other, and then not visible. So other is the kind of a catch-all. If you see a behavior you really don't care about, okay, that goes into other. Or if it's not visible, that's a very valid you know, category. You would put not visible because I couldn't see the animal and make an observation. And again, you know, when you're doing this. But, you know, not, not too in-depth or, or, you know, kind of this more of a time budget, what's the animal doing? Now, in the study that we did uh, with Angie's work, you can actually see we actually did do some more in-depth full behaviors and you can see play behavior was something that she was really curious about. So play dam, play full, play object, play locomote, total play, and then some social behavior, social affiliative to the dam, other foals, other adults, or total social affiliative. So we were really getting into the weeds of these full behaviors and you can see Angie designed a very, very nice ethogram with well definition. So when I'd go out in the field and help her or another student go out in the field and help her, we took those definitions, we knew exactly what she needed, what she wanted, and we could do our observations, okay? Now, the uh, way to collect data, we're gonna use an actual sheet, so an actual piece of paper that we'll use, but there are, just so you know, there are some handheld devices, computer programs you can use and, and whatnot, but just we're gonna use sheets uh, for this class because they're pretty easy. So this is a pretty standard ethogram that we use, the time budget ethogram that we use with the Somali wild asses, grevy zebras, and horses. Um, you can see it broken down to social behaviors. We are more interested in that, so that's order of importance. AG, you go to the side here, codes. So aggression, affiliative, submissive, play, and sexual behaviors. Then we had the maintenance behaviors going all the way down. And then you can see in her ethogram, she's got it in 30 second intervals, and then she has two horse IDs. So if we were doing two horses at once, which you can do, especially when you get really well trained, you can probably do three or four animals at once. So, you know, she left some space in there for if we were doing two animals at a time, we could, you know, take a snapshot there, take a snapshot there, record what the behavior was. You know, we were doing scan sampling every 30 seconds. So we're gonna put this into practice and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a couple videos and I just want you to try to see what your behavior would be. Okay, so obviously we would do 30 second, we're doing scan sampling, instantaneous scan sampling at 30 seconds, boom, take a snapshot of what that animal's doing, and then think and, and make a judgment based on, on in your mind. So in this clip, it's only gonna be about seven seconds, so it's kind of a short clip, but at the clip ends on where a behavior happens, and I kinda of want you to guess uh, what you would record on an ethogram. So here you can see the animal, this is at slow motion, so you can see what it's doing, Okay, it's another complex behavior, and then bam. So that's what the animal's doing. So here's in real speed. And this is what you'd be observing in the wild, or out, out observing horses. Bam. Okay, so if you watch that one more time, I want you to think of what behavior you would write down at the very end of this video. 
Okay. So if you didn't catch it, and, and, and really this video should play for a couple more seconds, and it does on our website, the, the horse, it's an amazing clip because, you know, probably starts out if we were observing this animal and say we we're doing continuous observation, writing things down, I guarantee you that initial splash was investigative. Maybe how deep does this go or, or what's down there, you know? And then the horse, I think, just said, oh, this is fun and just started, you know, bashing the water. Then you watch the horse drinks, reaches out and drinks, and then it reaches back and nips at its side. It's grooming. Okay, so in your 30 seconds, you're sitting here watching this animal, your watch hasn't beeped, and you're like, oh man, this is cool behavior, I really want to write it down, but you can't. You have to wait till the watch beeps. So then I see the, the horse drink really quick, then the horse, at, right when my watch beeps, boom, the horse is nipping at its side because there's a bug there or something. So there's the grooming behavior, and I have to write down grooming. I have to ignore the, the, the drinking, I have to ignore the play behavior. Um, I have to write down exactly what I saw and that was grooming. Now eventually you do enough observations, you'll get play behavior in these animals. You'll figure out how many times per day they play, stuff like that. Okay, that's just you doing a simple time budget. If I was interested in play behavior and I was doing all occurrence or continuous, I would write all that down. Uh, it just depends on how you design your study. So that's it. So what's next? We're going to break down some literature and, and, and how, how do we read scientific literature because it can be onerous. But I'll see you then.